field and we are producing this from our Western Division consultation. Here with me is Eleni Lambalamba from uh, Nawaka Soko Soko Marama, and also Rahil from Surapturis International, both of them representing the Nandi Division. So Eleni, you shared about the flooding uh, that has been happening in the Nandi District. Please, uh, can you share more on that? In Aka Francis, there were two big floods, one in 2009, and the big one took place in 2012. The problem in the Nandi town and the nearby villages is drainage problem and uh, there's no proper place for rubbish disposal. Therefore, some people are forced to put their rubbish into the river. And some, they don't have proper place at the backyard, so they put their rubbish elsewhere, which leads to drainage problem. And these two are the big factors of that uh, flood. Because if there's no proper drainage, all the, as soon as two days of uh, non-stop rain, all those water that see the river will just burst out on the river banks into the drain and automatically water arises. Thank you. So for the women, what happens when flooding uh, occurs? Are you informed beforehand to um, evacuate or to move to high grounds? How do you get the information? In uh, 2012, it was a big one. It was to our surprise. It was early as five years. I could hear the outside the house. I could hear the people waiting. I couldn't imagine because this is the first time the water just gush into the village. And when I see mothers, our light was still on. I see them with their children, with their blankets, moving here and there. I could imagine something really big is happening. There's a big problem out there. We all went out and we saw these ladies rushing to the school for evacuation center. No news or what. Even Turang Nikoro cannot be informed because his house was also under water. So it was, nobody knew that that night would cause us a big flood early in the early hours of the next day. Thank you uh, very much, uh, Eleni, for that. When it comes to women participating uh, in disaster risk reduction, do you think it is important for women to take part in this uh, planning process when it comes to addressing this problem? Yes, I think women should get involved in this uh, decision making, yeah? because women do the hard job. They normally do things behind the scene which are normally not recognized. Yeah? So if our system could change a little bit to salute the women, so that they can be recognized and uh, know how important their role is. Thank you very much, uh, Eleni. Over to you, Rahila. You spoke about uh, the changing, the past uh, changes that's happening with our education system. Mm -hmm. Please, uh, can you share um, about that? Yeah, one of our concerns was the major changing in our education system. The Government of the day is doing a lot for the education system and provided us with a budget of $432.2 million, which is quite a bit if utilized in the right way. But uh, the recent changes has been too fast for the students, teachers and parents to absorb. And I think uh, apart from having a big uh, impact on the students themselves, it's having a big impact on the mothers, the ladies at home. Because as mothers, we are the first educators of the children, and anything that happens to the kids or in the education system, the first victim is the mother who has to cope with the consequences. So, uh, like we all know, we had the exam uh, external examinations abolished and they came back again, but uh, 
we were never really consulted on any change of such. Uh, if we were asked or some questions were sent around in school and uh, our opinion was said, then maybe we would have come up with some better ideas that could have been incorporated. But uh, yeah, and I think the crunch of the thing goes back to the females at home who have to deal with it because they are the ones in charge of homeworking. And um, personally, I had so many mothers complaining that they just can't keep up and they don't know what to teach the child. And with all the exams coming back at once, it's becoming more difficult to deal with it. Thank you uh, very much, um, Rahila, for that. Uh, do you think like this will result in maybe um, the decrease in literacy rate when it comes to... Um, it actually might because uh, the, the, my kid, the schools they go to and they come back and say instead of four seven forms like we had last year, we've only got two seven forms this year and lots of six formers have not come back to school. So either they have done exceptionally well at six form in the tertiary or maybe they've just got scared off with the new education system and they don't feel like showing up at school. And it's more burden for the mothers at home who have to manage them at home while dads are away at work and trying to bring bread and butter home. Yeah. Thank you, Rahila. For our, we have been receiving reports from our uh, meeting in, uh, 1335 meeting in Nandi, mm -hmm. uh, from last year, where the division of the, the school uh, they have, um, the government has, have used some of the schools in order to build uh, uh, training centers and most of uh, the students are left because they have to find another school. So can you tell us more about that? You mean training centers? Like I think in Nandi, Nandi College was converted from a high school into training centers, but I'm not sure how successfully they are running. So, yeah, more education and maybe booklets at school and stuff from the education department. I know the education department is having lots of meetings with the school managers and the teachers, but maybe part of these get-togethers and meetings, parents are invited and uh, mothers in particular because they are the ones who manage the child for most of the hours at home. And so thank you very much, uh, uh, Ellen. Um, when it comes uh, to flooding, we were here right after the flooding in 2012, and we have seen the damages uh, this uh, the, the flood has done to the community. Mm -hmm. uh, when it comes to women taking part in uh, decision making, and also because of course when women uh, are included in decision making, they are able uh, to know and manage uh, activities that goes on during flooding. What What are your thoughts about this? Renaka, normally after the flood, we have a big work that needs to be done is cleaning up. Before you clean, clean up the village, you have to clean up your own backyard even in the house, eh? So the village was in a total mess just after the flood because the mud was, some of the houses, half of the houses, the mud was covered, eh? And this mud was so thick and the water pressure was so low and we were even forced to go to the river and uh, clean up, do our washing and everything, just to clean up the place. And uh, we see that it was a hard time for us because even the farmers, even our places of farming, it was also damaged. So when we go to the market, not enough supply there. And uh, when the rations come, it came a bit late, but we thank the government and other private sectors who contributed to the, the building up of uh, the lives of family and the, the victims of their flood. Thank you, Eleni. Um, when it comes to prioritizing 
uh, women's health after the flooding. Uh, can you tell us like what your community or um, have been doing, or are there any plans ahead? Of course, like you talked about uh, uh, the mud, the thickness, and all the the disease that can um, you know, cause by the flood, by, by the flood. Sorry. Okay, there's a risk there, but we think that uh, this is not the first time for us to have flood. But the 2012 one was one of the big flood we could imagine. And uh, as it comes along, we know what to do. Though it was big, though it was messy, but we managed. And we thank the mothers who cope up with all those uh, hard times. We can see in their faces, but they have smiles. They continue with the normal shows. Tell us more about the, your evacuation center. How far is it away from home? Evacuation center, the church itself, the Nawak Methodist Church, because it was one of the biggest building and it was higher. The foundation was really high. Especially when people saw the, that's the first time in the village when people saw the current just pushed inside the village. So even children had to be very careful when they wade in the flood waters to get into church and get into the schools. The school, only the double story building up, it was used for the first day. Eh? And after that, when the water went back, then they used the ground floor. Thank you, Ellen. When it comes to women's uh, security in the evacuation center, uh, personal security and also because as we know in, in the evacuation everybody um, stay together so what what do you think we should be doing or to help I know uh, human security okay Fiji we thank the government Fiji National <coughs> Gender Policy 2014 articles 3, 5, 10 and 15 supports the above issue and uh, we thank the government in our proposal if uh, the government could better do something with our rivers, uh, dredge the river or whatever they can contribute to help us well prepared when the next flood strikes we are well prepared and we know what to do and we don't rush in there or panic because that's the time we feel that if pre prevention measures are taken, then we are fully prepared whenever disasters to strike. So we should have a lot of information when it comes to before the flooding and after the flooding. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much, uh, Eleni. Uh, for you, Rahil. Uh, what do you think uh, uh, we should be doing, or the government should be doing, when it comes to the education, the changing of the education system? Uh, more consultation, maybe at uh, women organisations. Like we are, ladies can get together and give their input as to what might be suitable. Let them know what the changes are going to be. So collectively, from the different societies, we have different ideas and see whether what would be suitable for our Fijian. Fiji society rather than just copying something from overseas and then finding out it's not working like Lana and Filna exams and then now we're back to the external exams which were excellent during those days but now our kids are not used to it so going back to it is like having some difficulties I'm sure we're going to overcome them in a few years but yeah it will make everyone's life much easier and uh, the ladies life much easier and uh, maybe have some more Women in the government, like we only represent 8%, but some female voices might be a better idea to see things from the woman's perspective, which often is overlooked by men, and uh, we are not always uh, recognized for our effort that we do 24 7 without a pay. So, yeah. Thank you very much, uh, Rahil, uh, for that, and also for you, Eleni. And that was our radio with pictures from the field, and we are here producing these from our Western Division consultation.